Nice. What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sinus channel. My name is Shanks, and today we are playing a 1v1 matchup on the beautiful and famous map Forts of Eisen in BFME 1 on the patch 2.2. And please not Isengard once again. Please not. Nice. Nice. I take this every day of the week. Oh my god. Wow. Nice. Beautiful. So we get to play Gondor. Hopefully, it's going to be good against Evil matchup. That's my favorite. And we will have to Vault check to find out. Oh, it's a good faction, actually. Oh, yikes. Okay, I mean, normally I would like to dodge this matchup, uh, but I know when I would dodge this, the next time we will be queuing up in a random mirror situation, I will 100% get Isengard. And I don't want that. And I think I will get the chance now to show you how to play Gondor against a good faction on this map. And I'm also gonna eventually make an updated, um, you know, faction guide for Gondor, Rohan, Isengard, Mordor with, like, a um, matchup situation and rating. But that's gonna take a little bit amount of time for editing stuff, you know, recording multiple parts of the gameplay. And if you wanna see that, let me know in the comment section down below. And also, don't miss the video, and for that reason you need to subscribe to the channel. I mean, I can't tell if it's Gondor or Rohan, but we need to kinda take the risk. I wanna creep this, and creeping is actually very beneficial in this game. Again, every single level matters, and with creeping we get a lot of money. We get also a level 2 soldier, and even almost a level 3 hobbit. And the positioning is very important. You want to keep the hobbit next to the soldiers, and then he can share experience. We need to heal in a second. One more hit, now I need to heal. Okay. My hobbit is going to be almost level 2. Oh, beautiful. You see? And I'm assuming it's Gondor because when it would be Rohan, he would be attacking me by now. And now at this point, we need to save up for 800. But it's stable. What is important in this game is that, you know, quality beat co beats quantity. That's one of the major differences between this game and BFM2 and Rise of the Witch King. Each level matters a lot. And... You know, while keeping units is quite rewarding, losing units is actually very punishing. And especially when it comes to Gondor Knights. Of course, you can skip the Gondor Knights and go for the infantry instead, but when it comes to mobility, it's a huge advantage in this game. And you can be way faster with your cavalry units in compared to infantry. Especially early mid-game, the Gondor Knights are going to be a way better choice in compared to Gondor Soldiers. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming he's also creeping, and uh, that's the only logical explanation about what's going on. And hopefully, we can creep a bit faster. I mean, on this map, we have actually six work layers in total. And in a dream world, you want to take at bare minimum one more than your opponent. So you want to have at least four, and your opponent has to get only two. Each work layer gives you a huge amount of experience, and most importantly, power points. We need to go for the second golden knight. We should have the money very soon. In my recommendation, boys, we can make this like a small guide and tutorial. My recommendation is to always use shortcuts for your, for your stable early game, even for your building spots. So you can, like, the one thing you need to improve first is not to cash load. You want to build stuff the second you have the money for it. I mean, that's beautiful. That's going to be our third work layer. And I'm assuming the opponent was creeping the top side. Again, that's the only logical explanation. And we have almost a full beast. I mean, when you get this far with Gondor, it's really walk in the park, you know? Like, you are very, very strong at this point. We have a lot of power points already, one power point before engaging on any fight. We have a crazy good eco. And we should be just good to go. Now you can snowball your lead. I mean, he was trying to creep this, by the way. But he failed this, and... What? It's a Theodin rush? Really? Serious? I mean, that's a very questionable move, man. That's a very questionable move. And maybe you can do that against a beginner, but I would consider myself as not a beginner. And I also just lost uh, the creep, by the way. <laughs> Theodin got somehow the last... Don't even ask me how. Don't even ask me how. Okay. I mean, we are still in a phenomenal spot. Look at the minimap, boys. That's, what's, that's what matters, you know? Like, the map control is, of course, as you guys know, and you eventually heard it from me millions of times, the key to victory. 
Oh, I cannot fight this. Because Theodin's leadership is better and stronger than Forge Bleed, so we need also heavy armor, but I'm not gonna do this, actually. I'm gonna try to save up for Gandalf. And I can show you a significant way of, uh, you know, getting Gandalf on the field way, way cheaper. He also went for Elma. So he's going for the late game situation, in which Elma with level 4 and Theodin with level 4 is going to be, of course, very, very strong. But you can't go to the late game without having a good early game, you know? You need to kind of have a decent early game, decent mid game, so you can reach the lead game without losing too much of your early and mid game. Against a good player, he will not wait until you get ready. You know, he will just go ham on you. And now we will be building... Um, I can't even talk. We will be building up four statues. They will give us the hero bonus, making our Gandalf, a hero which normally costs 6,000, only costs 4,200. That's 1,800 discount. So we can get him on the field a bit earlier. I mean, it's about, you know, speed and tempo, RTS games. And us getting Gandalf on the field like a minute earlier can actually be game-changing. Again, without uh, Theorin, this Rohirrim, they don't stand a chance. Oh, that was close, actually. And we have also the power points for Gandalf. Okay, now we can recruit him. No! Oh my! Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you will, look right here. I mean, nothing happened, boys. Nothing happened, nothing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. Hey, guys, don't let me know that, please. I want to forget about that one. Okay? Nothing happened. Nothing happened. I mean, we changed Ilma, so every spear throw from Ilma is now able to one-shot any cavalry unit, one single unit. If it's a walk rider, Rohirrim, or the Gondor Knight, it doesn't matter. Even if they have heavy armor, they will get one-shotted, which makes the leveling up progress on Yoma way easier. In the patch 1.06, it was very difficult, and you could only kill the banner carry upgrade. That, that's that's it, you know, you couldn't do any more than that. I mean, I need to bail, I think. I cannot engage. I have heal on cooldown. And I will be building up in total six blacksmiths for the full bonus of the steel bonus. And the last building is going to be saved up for the market, please. Okay, beautiful. And now we have the money for the market, please. That's good. And um, we will need the uh, Grand Harvest and also Iron Ore. We have the Gun of the Wild Power Point from the Spellbook 2. Everything is looking good. I made a mistake. But, you know, uh, you know when you're, th that happens when your fingers are actually faster than your brain. And there comes the best hero in the game, boys. The best hero by far. For 6,000 plus 2 power points, you need to make him very strong. But then he is just like the best hero. You know, the uh, movement speed, the abilities, the damage output is phenomenal. Okay, so now we will save up for the Grand Harvest for 40% more money from the farms inside and outside. And then also the last upgrade. Then we can demolish the marketplace. We don't have to keep it anymore. Unlike in the patch 1.06. Nice, ooh. nice, ooh. I catch you, boy. I catch you, boy. Why are you running? Why are you running? What is also important in this matchup, and also, of course, generally in this game, is to demolish your buildings before they hit the 50% HP mark. So, before they get yellow, you want to demolish them, and that's the only way you can deny experience and power points from your opponent. If you demolish it early, it's fine. If you demolish it late, you will still get experience and power points, you know? So demolishing it is very important because in a, in a long game, every single farm you don't demolish can actually backfire later on and give your power, you know, opponent a huge power point lead. And I don't need to explain you how important the power points are in this game. Yes, Legolas. I want to kill Legolas actually. But I can kill this Theodin instead. I want to hit him one time. Hit him, hit him. Nice. Now, now I can Easter Elite him. Rest in peace, King of Rohan. Nice. This poor guy, dude. He was in the films getting bullied by the Witch King. And in this game, he's getting bullied by Gandalf. Beautiful. Now from this, I want to build a barracks for the Tower Guards. And then I want to build double siege at the outpost so I can siege him way faster. Again, it's about snowballing, uh, snowballing effect. Uh, he's trying to scale into the late game. But when we siege him right off the bat, we won't give him the chance and the opportunity to get to this point. Because the last thing we want is his, him having a highly leveled Legolas and Elma 
and you know, with Eomo leadership here and leadership Legolas hitting like a truck. Um, and then my, my Gandalf can't even play the game anymore. So we demolish the buildings in time. Look at the minimap. We are pretty much Elon Musk in this game. We are super rich, making bank, making money, making cash. And, you know, Boromir will be also recruited. So you can see the glory days of Gondor. We are in a phenomenal spot, phenomenal spot. I think I had never such a great and flawless, flaw, fl English is that, flawless, <laughs> correct me in the comment section down below. My, uh, you know, my English, it's not my native language, boys. I hope you can still understand me good though. All right, so let's sell them. So we have more space in the command point department and then we can just fill it up with the tower guards. And again, double siege works so we can siege a bit faster. At this point, money doesn't matter anything. We have marketplace, we have full map control. He has legit zero farms outside, and that's how you play Gondor against Rohan, or should we call this video, that's how you shouldn't play Rohan against Gondor. <laughs> I don't know. I want to kill this dude. One hit. I'm gonna... Ah, he's actually paying attention to it. It's fine though. It's fine. So we can sell this in one more soldier. Um, I think we can also buy the outpost at the bottom left side, but I don't think we need it. I mean, it would be a great choice to do that, because just why not, you know, we can build three more farms there and get even more money. But I don't think we need to extend this game that long. Because now what I can do is, as I was able to save my Gondor soldiers from the beginning of the game, I can combine my level 4 soldier with a tower guard. Legolas, you will be dead, my friend. One hit from the Gondor Knights and then history from Gandalf should be enough. I will represent the men of Gondor. Thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Oh, he healed? I can cancel it, I can cancel it. So when he heals, you know that you can't kill him, then you can just cancel your, you know, Easter light before he is able to shoot it, and then he just wasted heal, but if he comes out, I have still my Easter available. So that's a very, um, you know, but you, can do, you can do that for beating your opponent's heals, or Atelas, or any ability. And heal is like a, like three minutes cooldown, which is a long time in this game. Now let the siege begin, and when Legolas should come, we can always wombo combo him with the warning arrow from Faramir and then the Easter from Gandalf, so we can always 100 to 0 him. This combination is very deadly, can also one shot a Nazgul, for example. So if you use warning arrow against a Nazgul and you combine this, time this, so there is no gap between Easter and light, uh, Easter light and warning arrow, then you can chunk any hero in the game, including Aragorn, a lot. Because warning arrow from Faramir actually is a very significant damage um, ability against a single target. And Farami can show his quality. Again, but that's what we are aiming for. I want to kill Legolas. Watch this, watch this. I mean, he is peeling. If he comes anywhere close, I will punish him for it. Let's combine this. Boom, you see level four tower guard soldier combination. Very powerful. Keep sieging at Firestone and bring even more trebuchet. And that's what you need to do against somebody who's trying to scale into the late game and because he thinks he has walls and he has protection, shatter and destroy those walls into pieces. Now, Legolas, I will take care of you, my friend. Easterly, warning arrow combination. Watch this. Easterly first. Look, look, Faramir, Faramir. Look, Faramir. Boom, son, showing his quality like a madman. Let's call it. I mean, I'm, you know, I know your daddy is not proud of you, Faramir, but I am. I am. Look, we have a trebuchet army, <laughs> and that's how you should. I mean, he's gonna S for E, but it's GG. Uh, GG well played. I mean, you should. You can't do that, man. You need to go for horses for peasant spam. In, a, in either case, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. And as always, you know, stay beyond standards. Everybody wants to know what I would do if I didn't win. I guess we'll never know. <laughs>